I was fortunate enough to play with some of the greatest players who's ever played this game, the Pete Roses, the Johnny Benches, the Tony Perez's. That gives you a leg up because you're playing in a winning environment. The thing that we talked about forever was the, the play he made in the World Series against uh, Oakland A's when there was a pop-up behind first in foul territory, and he went over and called Perez off. And he caught the ball, and, and Joe turned to throw it to home, and he slipped and still got it to me as a bang-bang play. Morgan the bench, and the game is over. The only thing Joe cared about in their life it was how strong a throw he made. Three years after losing that 1972 World Series to the A's, the Reds faced the Boston Red Sox in one of the most unforgettable fall classics ever. In the ninth inning of a tied-up Game 7, the NL MVP stepped to the plate with a chance to give his team the lead. There was never one moment I didn't feel like I was going to get a base hit. There's a looper. They drop. It's in for a hit. And the Reds have the lead 4-3. to three. It turned out I got the hit, and we won the World Championship. That's like the fulfillment of, of a dream come true. The next year, the Reds were again champions, and Morgan was again the league MVP. Joe Morgan, everybody's choice for the National League's most valuable player. In his second MVP season of 1976, he hits 320, 27 homers, 111 RBIs. He also leads the league in on-base percentage and slugging. To top it off, he leads the league in sacrifice flies. He also grounds into only two double plays, and he steals 60 bases. Too late, he steals it. He was not just the MVP back-to-back, -back, he was, for that period of time, the best player in baseball. 